as she said. History is another name for humanity's inability to learn its lesson. My concern for civilization values about which I continue writing may sound naive, woolly-headed and simplistic. But then, perhaps, I am like that little bird which foolishly puts up its claws, hoping that it will stop the sky from falling. Even today, one still feels the freshness and strength of different characters created by her. As a prolific writer, she started writing at a very young age. She is considered one of the most celebrated writers of Urdu fiction. The death of Karachalane Hyder marks the end of a period of the optimum writing in Urdu. Karachalane Hyder truly dominated the world of Urdu literature for over six decades. Her piece Mir Bisanam Kani, My Temples, too, is the story of family embedded in the traditions of the Indo-Muslim culture as it struggled to narrate the tragic tale of the birth of two new nations. The set of rich chair caters like Rakshhanda, Karen, Picho, Christable and Gunni represent a group of people who are brave, protagonists and enthusiastic for creating a new world. The story also portrays deep cultural roots of Lucknow, its faded culture and how old values replaced the new ones after partition. It also reflects the end of a feudal system that came with the independence. Her work Kari Jahan Daratshe is an excellent family chronicle and autobiographical work. The most genius literary work is Ag Khadaria, River of Fire, that deals with the dilemma of human condition in the Indo-Pakistani background until the formation of a new country. Through a wonderful characterization that depicts the sociology, history and culture that rooted over centuries in India, the tour de force beautifully extends over centuries and explains a vast span of times and historical epochs till post-independence era in India and Pakistan. Her work Agla Janam Mohibisha Nahijia is a fine and delicate piece on social class, gender exploitation and injustice. The poor girls Cameron and Shamsan struggle a lot to get themselves adjusted in a cruel and unaccepting male-dominated society. Sita Haran is about a dirge to the sagacity of individual and political perfidy subject to human beings. It is about a modern and well-educated Sindhi Hindu migrant woman, Sita Merchandani, who starts living with her lover Fan after being separated from her Muslim husband and remains highly nostalgic about her past. She struggles against a battle of exile that is more internal in nature. It is a story of betrayal at personal as well as political level. Housing Society explores the post-independence cultural and economic classes. Jamshet, who is a poor man's son, comes to Karachi and becomes a powerful and influential business entrepreneur. While the family of Cody Bisha, Salma, and Surya start struggling to make their survival in the new political and economic system. One finds a touch of little scorn in this masterpiece novella. Her piece Pat Jarkia Watts, The Sound of Falling Leaves, has a classical touch to it. And it has been translated into Bengali, Punjabi, Oriya, Tamil, Kannada and Dogri languages. It unfolds a series of personal, economic, historical and political betrayals and also tends to explore the calamitous events that have disclosed their lives. Her travelogue Koi Domovan covers the reminiscences of Iran, Russia, and Kashmir. Chennai Begum reflects the altering realities of modern life and people who are main victims of this traumatic cycle. The novellas Dial Riba and Chaik are based on traumatic social status of women. The ordeal felt by Gan Rabay and Kashani sisters is well enough to depict the misery of women in a society. The street singers of Lucknow and other stories combine fact, fantasy and pinch of satirical humor along with Rococo imitation and brusque postmodernism. Picture Gallery is a collection of different essays, reports and documentaries on tropical issues. 
Besides these, her works include Sitter and Siegi, Shishakar, Safina Igami Dil, Gardashi Rang Ichaman, Roshani Kirafter, Satambar Kakand, Fazal Gul Aaya Ajla Ae and Jila Waitan. The novel Akar e Shab Kamsfar is set in Bengal and runs alongside imperative historic moments and epics like the ascending in nationalistic feelings, the rise of revolutionary movements in Bengal, and the demand for Bangladesh. She received the Sahitya Akademi Award in 1967, Soviet Land Nehru Award in 1969, and Golub Award in 1985. She also received Nan Pith Award in 1989 for her novel Akar e Shab Kamsfar. She was awarded Padma Shri and was conferred the Padma Bhushan in 2005 by the Government of India, for her role to Urdu literature and education. She left us on August 21, 2007 after a prolonged illness. If I keep on writing about her all life, her work, and other achievements, my pen would never stop. Her range and depth in portraying societies, cultures, traumas and individuals still remains inimitable. She would always live on in her stories.